How you both? How are you both? I put on my glasses today so that I can see my eyes. Yeah. I still feel like Janmashtami is is here. You know, the festival. No. Is, yesterday was so sweet and so nice. I just wanted to keep going. I'll definitely be at the temple again today. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm going to go for Prabhupada in the, in the earlier part of the day. Yeah. That way we can still make time for our phone call. Indeed, indeed. With the, with the future of ISKCON. <laughs> I wonder how they feel about that. Um, <laughs> um, so today's question. Oh, the topic for discussion today is, are you the future of ISKCON? Well, no, wait, no, that wasn't the No, <laughs> does Krishna even exist? Does and Krishna even exist? I was thinking, you know, perhaps in addressing this question, the first thing we should talk about is why even ask this question, right? Um, right. I think that asking a question like this sort of says that we can ask anything. We shouldn't be afraid to ask questions. You know, probing these uh, topics really ultimately solidifies our faith. If we don't address them, uh, then that kind of leaves a, a chink in our armor, you know. Uh, there's, uh, we're vulnerable essentially uh, if we if we don't address like important but difficult questions. There's a famous quote from, <clears throat> I believe, like Emily Dickinson or something, that says, um, "I believe in a faith that allows me to doubt mm. as strongly as I believe." Mm. Very nice. You know, in other words, like our job is to really immerse ourselves in our spiritual tradition so much so that any question is a fair question if it leads us closer to Krishna. You know? Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And you see, that's what, that you, that's what you see Arjun do, right? In, in the Gita. Like he's yeah. asking questions. He asks a lot of questions. And without yeah. them, there wouldn't be a Gita. Not yeah. the way we have. Yeah. So, but we don't even know if the Gita was spoken because Krishna, does even Krishna exist? Right. Does Krishna even exist? So Prabhu, how, how have you well, addressed I mean, like, you know, there's a, couple of, there's a couple of pieces of that. Like, like, are we talking about historically? Hmm. Like, was it just a made up story? Like Jesus, was Jesus a made up story? Um, like the, the Old Testament, the Bible, stories about Moses, and are those just made up stories? Like, so that's one question. Like, did it even right. happen? And then there's like the question of like, did someone just take something that actually happened in, you know, in history and then just like make it all fancy so that it seemed better? Made than it into was. a religion, right. So right. the question is, did Krishna appear? And then even if he did appear, is he God? Right. So that's the yeah. next question is like, you know, and then of course there's this other one wrapped up inside the, uh, the uh, samosa of this question is, does God even exist? Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're definitely all related. How do you want to tackle it? Oh, uh, well, I don't know. What's the one that that's talking to you right now? I mean, what you, I think you helped come up with this question. Yeah. This the way I conceived the question was more uh, about the latter, not so much worrying about the sort of historical uh, part of it, but about the uh, ultimately the the theological part of it is um, does God exist? Does God exist? Does Krishna even exist? Right. I mean, because yeah. you know, you could. That's a good point. You could separate that whole thing out and just say God, Krishna, Wakantanka, Jehovah, whatever name you want to call them, the Great mm -hmm. Spirit in the sky. Um, and they're all just different names for the same guy. Indeed. And in bhakti, guy and gal, Radha Krishna. But we can just leave that aside. So, so we're like, does God even exist? Like, what are we celebrating? You know, like well, Christmas, Janmashtami, whatever. What, what are we, is it, is it just like a bunch of people? You know, what do they say? What is the, the famous the communist thing that religion is just the opiate oh, of the yep. past? Yeah, Marx. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, Sometimes I think what Marx was trying to say is that religion can help keep us in chains. And that, that's, that's a terrible thing. Uh, but that's exactly what we're trying not to do here by asking these questions. Um, so I think we can put that one to rest. 
Uh, right. In other words, we're not the people who are trying to use religion to oppress. We're the people who are trying to use religion, spirituality, Krishna consciousness to free us. Lift. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, when I think about this question, uh, Gauramani Guru, I always think about a couple of things. One is um, uh, the, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. And this is our own experiences. Right. I really like this about our tradition, about Krishna Bhakti in general, is that it really is such an experiential tradition where we're not asking someone to like simply believe as, as often is done in other traditions. We're asking them, okay. Believe because your parents believe. Believe because your grandparents believe. Or believe because you'll go to hell otherwise, right? Right, or believe from fear, right? Right, exactly. Um, so we, we don't have that. We say, here's a process, you know, um, chant the names of the divine um, and see how your life changes. Not only how your life changes, but how you actually, like, personally experience Krishna in your life. And I think nothing is as, as powerful as that. No argument, no, um, uh, you know, f f theory, no hypothesis um, will ever replace, like, the, the value of our experience. Um, That's a nice point. Yeah. Uh, and in, and we, we hear our teachers, like Bhakti Vinod, you know, they, they talk about um, the depth of their experience. Um, of, of the divine in their lives. I mean, literally mm -hmm. seeing Krishna face to face, what that's like. Um, sure. I think it's remarkable. We, we find that in no other tradition, and at least in my understanding and experience, it's very rare to have mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, yeah, even Lord Chaitanya was all about his experience. I mean, he was a big rascal when he was young. He was a troublemaker. He was like, kind of like, you know, flirting with the ladies on the bank of the Ganga. He was like, smashing people in debate full of pride and all these things and then he had an experience mm -hmm. you know where he met this great saint Ishwara Puri and he had this experience where he could perceive this is what a person should be this is a Vaishnava and then he took initiation from him and and that initiation because he was his heart was ready and it was soft it changed him and he mm -hmm. had some experience and from that experience more experience came right what about yeah. you How that's a good how do you respond to a question like this? Um, I, you know what? I go to the movie um, uh, uh, Doctor Strange. Hmm. You know that movie with the guy, oh. you know, Benedict Cumberbatch? He's like a surgeon. Oh, oh yes. I, I do know that movie. Yeah, I do, actually. You remember that? So, yes. so, there's, so there's one. I was having some trouble one time with my faith, and I was just thinking, you know, like we do and you know like all this you know anxiety and stress about krishna and spiritual practices and how do i even know krishna exists or any of this exists and i was watching dr strange mm -hmm. and i had this kind of mystical experience where i realized bear with me i realized right here <laughs> There's a section in the movie basically where he goes to like Nepal and he gets like I remember mystic. that. So his like mystic bald white guru lady, like, you know, I don't know why she's a white guru lady in Nepal, but whatever. She like gives him some Shakti initiation thing and he starts to see like the vastness of the universe. Mm -hmm. And you I don't know if you remember that section, but it's like incredible shapes and faces and like it's really worth checking out it's just wild. I know, like the virata rupa right like yeah the, it's like the virata right yeah, so it's like our yeah so my experience was watching that and i just realized all of this which seems like this incredible universal vision is an artist sitting in some 3d shop somewhere in hollywood and this all came from inside his mind mm. And I just realized if this vast, incredible, mystical universe came from inside this artist's mind, think about how vast the universe actually is. If this is just in one guy's mind, think about everyone's mind what's possible. And then beyond that, how many other creatures we don't know about in this universe. And that's just the creatures in the material universe. And I just, I just realized this universe is so vast that anything is freaking possible mm. in the vastness of this universe. And if anything is possible, the fact that I am a person 
who's watching something and experiencing something is completely impossibly like a miracle. And in that realization is if I can be a person having an experience in the vastness of everything, why can't there be a God who is also a person having an experience? Why can only I be someone having a a vast experience? Mm -hmm. If I, a nothing speck of insignificant nothingness can have an experience, surely God can also have an experience. Right, because how can something exist in us that doesn't exist in God? Right, and that, and, and that we have this clear understanding that there are things beyond us. So I know I'm not God. There's something beyond me that's holding this whole thing together, right. whether you call it Shesha or... It's got to whatever. have come from somewhere, right? Somewhere. Even the, even the Big Bang has got to have come from somewhere. Come, and it didn't come from me. so in that realization i just realized that if i'm a person god can also be a person having a personal experience even if it's just for one moment in in the vastness of creation if i can have it god can also have it and that personal experience god actually feeling thinking tasting that is krishna that's who we worship now however uh, other structures you want to put around it that personal aspect of the divine that i'm having a shadow experience of in my own life, that is the person that I'm trying to connect with. Yeah, wonderfully said. Uh, I really resonate with that. And I've the thought in those ways before as well. Uh, because after all, you look up at the sky and you think, it's all out there. There's, there's life, there's, there's so much, and it can't, be, it can't be meaningless. It can't be void, right? It can't be nothing. Uh, in fact, that's been one of the most powerful sort of um, ways for my faith to grow, which is to think that if there is no God, then there is no meaning in life because there's no absolute basis for anything. Um, we can't. It's all just like, it's all just like a cloud. It, blowing. Yeah, it's blah. It is. We, you know, we come into being, we die, it means nothing. And anyone can do anything they want. There's no good, yeah. there's no bad. Take, rob, there's, no there's no morality. There's no morality. Yeah, there's, um, you just lose all sense of purpose and meaning. And a life without that, Prabhu, that is the worst kind of hell slash, you know, misery that, that someone can have. And so for me, to, to have faith in, in, divine, in, in the divine and in God, means that there is meaning there is purpose in life and um, I, don't, I don't need any more you know of a push than that uh, that's that is way more than enough for me to have faith nice yeah. beautiful love it thank you well we hope we hope that these little videos that we're making are like maybe like at this they say like prime the pump like help you guys think about your own thoughts and we, we love you guys. We're so proud of you guys. We're so grateful that you're letting us like be part of your spiritual experience. And we really encourage you to think deeply, right, Prem? I mean, this is all about yeah. these guys. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no, I echo that totally. Um, this is an amazing group. And hopefully you're watching this video and uh, <laughs> we'll get something out of it. Uh, I, I will, I'll add a, uh, what's it called? Like a, uh, like a hidden brownie point for those who watch the video that way we'll know nice check you out this is uh, look up pascal's wager and see if you understand what that is and then we can talk about it later pascal's wager all right pascal's wager all right all right bull take Very care well. see ya